Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What is up, folks? Yep, it's that time. Your watch, your iPhone, your clock, if you're so old-fashioned, is correct. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show, where we talk about all things music, motivation, success, and whatever the heck comes up. The very exciting day, because I am in the room with Jim McCarthy, co-host, co-producer, drummer extraordinaire. Jim, how are you, buddy? Good, man. How are you? It's, it's, been, been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Right? You've been so busy. You're producing 20 podcasts. You know, you're keeping the world safe for podcasts, this incredible new media. Occasionally, I'm lucky enough to get you on the Zoom, you know, but we've been doing this on Zoom for about four years. This yes. pesky, you know, international pandemic reared its ugly head. And so we were not doing the in-persons. But today we are in person. And not only are we uh, with each other, we mm -hmm. are joined by Australia's hottest country rock duo. They're great friends of mine. Of course, I'm talking about Nick and Tom Wolf. How are you guys? Hey. Look oh, at that. Tom. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. This is cool. Hello. Yeah, yeah. And Nick brought his beautiful bride. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. She, now, Tony, you were saying that we are, you are about ten thousand miles from your homeland, and this almost seems like a joke when I say it because it's so interesting that I, I know two people, three people, several people from Tasmania. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't get further away, really. really it's uh, it's so good to be back over here with you guys. It's been. 2019 was the last time we were over, and yeah. lots changed in those uh, five years. Yeah. Nashville's, Nashville's a lot busier than it used to be. It though. is. There's more traffic, right? It's crazy. It's, it's, more traffic. It's, it's been... It's such a journey to get over here. I, I'd forgotten how harsh that long no. flight, flight is. Like, it just... We used to, used to be pretty good at adapting to the time zone change, but this time... It what just, is it, like 24 hours? So yeah, so they're 15, 15 hours ahead of us right now. Okay. I think it's like one thirty in the morning back at home. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, you land here and it's you instantly just adjusted. This time was not the case. Yeah. We, uh, it was brutal. That but. is brutal jet lag. I remember one time I went to Japan and I, when I came back, I slept an entire 24-hour period. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I that's... The, I, suppose, yeah. I think you're just supposed to adapt to the current situation. Is that, you know, melatonin land? Well, you know, and do the thing. I've really embraced melatonin. <laughs> on, uh, we, we can't... At home, you got to get that through a prescription, and, and I think it's like 150 bucks something. But this time, it's just uh, Walmart and uh, yeah, you know, buy like 400 of them. So we've stocked really up love on the melatonin. Great. Stocked up on melatonin, and we've stocked up on Advil PM before I go back. To <laughs> 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 I got to do the customs are watching. Don't don't, uh, don't sit my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I always have like before I get on a flight, I got to make sure I have gum. And yeah. I got to make sure I yeah. have uh, Mucinex. Okay. Because it, otherwise it blows out my ears. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. It, it's horrible. It's, oh, so it's, the Mucinex is used to kind of drain the cavities? Is that yeah, what that's Yeah, you know, it <laughs> helps you with the, just, you know, because all the gumming up of the works and stuff. Drain the cavities. And when you go, when you come in for landing, yeah. it's just, I feel like I've got hope, hot pokers in my ears. Oh, yeah. me too. Yeah. yeah. Man. Well, I, I, I did take that trip one time to see your beautiful country, and we, we were only there for like five days. Yeah. Brisbane, Melbourne, and Sydney. And I feel like Sydney is a, like a, an amazing combination of like New York and LA. You got the palm trees, but then there's the culture, yeah. and there's like the fashion, and people are beautiful, and there's like an energy. But I was I was there for like 18 hours. Yeah, man. yeah. that's a good. I, I see. We've said L A is kind of um, Sydney is Australia's L A. I, I think agree. that's probably a good yeah. Yeah, a good comparison. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now let me say this to, to folks that aren't familiar with you: check these guys out on the Spotify. These are just some of their accomplishments. Um, their first original music release was in 2010, and then there's this amazing story about Australia's Got Talent, which I want you guys to get into. Six albums written and recorded, but that ain't nothing. Look at this. 19 Australian number one country songs, nine Golden Guitar Awards, which is kind of like Australia's CMA Awards, CMA, yeah, yeah. and you're, it says that you're the most awarded group in Australian country <laughs> music history for Australian number one albums. That's a lot. Of, congratulations, it's, guys. It's been a hell of a journey. It's it, like I think part of me is so proud of that, but I also don't like to say because you don't want to come across as like 
Yeah, we're we're the great. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Own it. It's, it's just we've, own it. We've worked really hard at it, and we love doing this. So we're very proud of what we've got to achieve, especially in the last few years. Like, way the industry sort of embraced us at home. It's been it's been amazing, mate. So yeah, we're we're very fortunate to do this. Now, one of the one I I, I agree. I'm right in there in that lane with you with the gratitude factor. Um, we're going to go back, because take us back. Everyone's got to do that. But one of the latest accomplishments is you guys played with, with the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. We did. So this came about during COVID. Um, we, Australia got locked down pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Um, so we couldn't really, like, it was all sort of different state by state. So there was a lot of states we couldn't go into tour. So it was really hard for us. We were in Tassie. Um, now, that was one of the most locked down places, right? It, well, yeah. And, and the thing is, we're an island state. So we didn't even really have COVID there. Yeah, like kind of the good side of it was they locked it down really hard and wouldn't let anyone in. But life was pretty well Normal. as it was. We just couldn't leave, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah. but you could still pretty much go anywhere. and Because we had zero or three cases and those those people would have been like indoors or you know yeah so I, I, obviously pretty extreme but uh it was pretty for the most part we was just kicking around doing what we normally do you know? that's nice that's right so during that lockdown um a friend of ours named Tom Rhymes had access to a church, of all things. Wolf Brothers playing in a church. And he said, yeah. <laughs> he's like, can you guys, look, I'm doing acoustic shows. I want to see musicians just start working again. And we were like, great, this would be really fun. Um, I guess we're probably known a bit more for, like, high energy, as you said, country rock. I'm running over the stage like an idiot. It was a really it's good true. opportunity. It is true. That's true. <laughs> it was a really good opportunity to slow things down, talk a bit more about the story, about the songs, and he he loved it. Like, he loved it. And he was like, well, I do a lot with the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. I think this would actually be a really cool... Pairing. Like, pairing. Yeah. yeah. We talked about it for a few years, and then credit to the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra, they came to us last year and said, no, we, we really want to do this. We want to invest in the charts and we want to create something that's really special to Tasmania and our state and um, it was like incredible we like went through the set list about 20 times with them and um, tried to pick sort of a covering of our career and tell a story and um, yeah it was a playing with that orchestra was like such a such a different beast to what yeah. we normally do F- totally yeah. bucket list thing you know to hear songs that we've written over the last 10 you know 12 years or whatever like come to life in that different way and you know we got to tom did such a fantastic job with the compositions and kind of was that you know an early song girl the bottle of the memory that was kind of our first number one that took a different you know some things took a totally different turn like that we redid the chords. We made it more like Glen Campbell. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, Big real. strings. Oh, the song so that, that you wrote, That Kind of Night, which yeah. has been a massive song for us and it's a, always a staple in the set list. I love it. That kind of took on, let's say, like an Indiana Jones uh, <laughs> yeah. sort of feel, you know. Well, that, that, that opened, the song you wrote opened the show with this sort of orchestra intro that went for two minutes and it was like a movie. Like an overture. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. An overture. Yeah. It, was, it, felt, it felt like we were Indiana Jones walking out into it the... It was I'll, I'll go as honestly as one of the coolest things ever. You know, yeah. It was so good. Walking, okay. on, walking on the stage with those shows in, while that was it playing. Felt was like, it was felt like, heroic. It felt heroic. Are we the coolest people in the world? Yes. <laughs> At that moment, we've made it. I mean, a symphony orchestra is, it is a, it's such a unique thing and it's just so powerful it's and majestic. It's so powerful. Um, we, we love combining it and, like, for us... You know, um, Nick and I are the Wolf Brothers, obviously, but we travel with a five-piece band and we wanted to incorporate that as well. So there was some stuff that was like drums, electric, harmonica, keys, full rocking out. Yeah. And then we also stripped it back to just Nick and I, acoustic. And total shout-out to the boys in the band and the crew too. I feel like everyone rose to the oh, occasion. Yeah. You yes. Know? Uh, uh, we, it was really I'm proud of us all it was uh, great I was pretty stressed leading up to those shows and I was, it was maybe the most stressed I've ever seen well, you you, yeah. you, know, you, you over prepare you know oh. and then you just go and then you just let it go and let the muse take over and, and you guys filmed it did you film it we, we recorded it filmed a yeah. bunch of it I think actually the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra are making like a documentary oh, wow. the process because they came down to the farm with Nick and I and Simon who runs the TSO and 
Tom Rhymes in There's the There's always a guy named Simon, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Simon, Simon is like, imagine an orchestra guy. He's exactly what an orchestra guy looks like. White hair. He looks like Mozart. I love yeah. you. Yeah. Simon, oh, wow. you. I love you. Um, but that was, uh, honestly, uh, and we're going to do it again. And actually, I haven't even told you, I got a text from Simon literally yesterday. He wants to send some of the live recordings off to other symphonies around Australia and... and do it again. I rinse and repeat. Once you get the charts. And, and that's the great thing. Like, we actually did a song right, um, it was like two days ago, right next door to where, like, the Nashville Symphony was. And I was like, oh. Just, just putting it that, 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 the the that yeah. to the universe. Dude, yeah. I could totally see that see that happening. And you, so you guys have been in town for, like, like a, like two weeks. You'll come every couple of years or so and just write, write, yeah. write oh, every so day. Many writes. I feel a bit like an empty shell of, <laughs> yes. of a human I mean, it's, right now. For but. people that don't know, songwriting is a such a craft. We're in the songwriting sort of capital of the world for this particular kind of music. Definitely the songwriting capital of the world. And, yeah, and just, you know, you walk outside of your house and, you know, the mailman's a songwriter, your barista's a songwriter, yeah. everyone is a songwriter. Uh, and we wrote one together about a week ago. We and, and you came in with a like a fully fleshed out title, great, and it just happened. Which happened. I came up with about 10 minutes before you walked in. But <laughs> let's just, uh, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll pretend it was uh, something I worked on for years. But um, no, that, that's one of my favourite ones we've got in this, in trip. this trip, for yeah. sure. Who, who else did you guys write with this week? Was it a lot, of, a lot of writers. Yeah, so we wrote, obviously, with yourself and um, Eric Halby. Eric um, Halby. You guys wrote That Kind of Night, which yeah. has been a big part of our set. Um, we wrote with a great friend of ours, Jordan Brooker. Nice. Um, we wrote with CJ Salah. A um, couple of great ones with CJ. Yeah, right. a couple of great ones with CJ. Another great mate of ours, Drew Kennedy. Um, of course, with fellow Aussie Phil Barton, um, synonymous around town for being just an energy, an energy uh, vortex. <laughs> Similar to you, yeah, yeah, yeah like you. Um, lots of pe- like lots of people. Like, I, and I reckon we could have written another twenty times, but the brain is only capable of yeah of so it does, so much. It's a lot mentally and physically to do the thing. A lot of calories are being burned. Uh, neurons are firing, and, and it's just another another place. I mean, I think you, you could write three songs a day but they're not going to be what's the, what's the biggest hang up in a song when you're writing lyrics and everything the second verse is it the second <laughs> verse yeah. no, I'll, I'll be Sometimes. like you know do I use the here or or you know is it get to that it's definitely that gritty? Uh, the thing for me is if, if the idea is great mm-hmm. you want to make the whole thing great yeah right. and it's it's very easy just to go like uh, cold beer Friday night girl truck you know but you want to dig a bit deeper than that and make sure it is great and is going to stand the test of time and is going to hang around and not just be what, pe- what people are saying you know the the cool word of the week is lit so let's use that you know, that's yeah we don't really like to do that uh, uh, for guys that are in town like riding five six seven times a week i I don't know how they're coming up with the like the ideas. Right. Like, I mean, we planned this. We haven't been in five years, mm-hmm. and we booked the flights like six, seven months before we come here. And we had both had like ideas in our phone for trying to come up with great song ideas. Halfway through, we'd ra- we'd ran out of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. We had six yeah. months to prepare. So, um, it's but all, things it's pop all about up the idea. too. Yeah, and and so I think just because everyone's a musician, everyone's at the top of their game here. Not that that's not the case at home. Yeah. I, I guess just it's so focused. Everyone's, tr- like, trying so hard to to get to that next yeah. level here yeah. all the time. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not a, com- it's, it's a competitiveness, but it's also a lifting everyone up as well. Yeah, collaborative. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know. Uh, like, on the ideas thing, when we were at lunch after we wrote the other day, <laughs> you, you said something, and I wrote it down as an idea, yeah. which turned into a like gr- a, great a great song. So let, let me ask you this. I've always had an yeah. idea for a song. If it's, if it's mentioned, does, does somebody able to, oh, that's a good idea? You know, and then they run with it, and all of a sudden, some guy gets. A, I've always had, you know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't put it out. I don't know. I'm, uh, what the heck? Be careful. Do it, yeah, right. <laughs> What's the idea, Jim? Get your uh, phone out to so, record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your half two years. I was like a. Uh, she's in her get two years. I always have a theory on life that you go through different phases. Most of our lives are are half two years. The things we have to do, yeah. and we're working to our get two years. Oh, yeah, oh that's, that's great. Great, right? Jim. Yeah, you're yeah. getting. 
being part of this. <laughs> so that's that's a This is idea. on record, okay? Yeah, we, we can write this via Zoom. Yeah. I mean, because these guys are should get on the plane tomorrow. We're on the yes. plane tomorrow. But that is a great idea. And if you were in a writing room, you just talk, and you just you probably spent half hour, hour just really talking about it and going, right. okay, what do we need to say? What exactly? Yeah. How do we really shape this idea? I'm just a I concept guy. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. one realization yeah. I've had this trip particularly is. It, it is so much luck. Yeah. Even so though much. everyone's great at what they do, bringing great skill set, but it's going to come down to like, okay, how are the three people in this room feeling on this day? What have they listened to in their life, let alone on the trip, the drive to the right, or yeah, the previous yeah. couple of weeks? What's kicking around in the in the cogs in the mind that's yeah. going to come out? You know, does it come out of frustration sometimes? Sometimes, yeah, sure. it's sometimes. definitely some. That's and the other thing is to <laughs> the awkwardness in the room mm-hmm. propels the right forward. Right. Sometimes, because so I'd be really good in that sense. Yeah. I, I make things really <laughs> awkward. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too yeah. Well, like some of our like closer mates here, like Jordan Brooker is a really good mate of ours, and we wrote a song, and it probably took us six hours. Yeah, and it, it took that long because we could relax, laugh. Well, Tom was lying on the floor like. Crying with laughter, yeah, which you know, know like, yeah. that's yeah. a level of comfort you don't typically Amazing. get in a national yeah. writing room. If I've just walked into a ride with someone I've just met, you're not going to do not gonna that. Be, but right. sometimes that's also good because then you're like, you sort of say so focused on tasks. It's like, yeah. okay, so what are we? What are we? Okay, what do you think of that? Like, it's there is so many variables in it, and then I think like we've been talking to a lot of the riders here, and they're like. Love this, you know. We'd actually love to pitch some of this stuff, and you're like, okay. And then, then it's like, what mood are they in when right. they hear the song? But what, what have they just listened to before that? So yeah. you just it, you got to put it out there, hope for the best. Because you're in a closed room typically, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So what if, like, you know, the receptionist walks by, and you guys are kind of like at a log jam, and she just overhears and says, and she just goes. Ba da ba da ba bam, and she just gives you a suggestion. It's She's probably, like, "It's great, right. it's gray area, man." Right? Yeah. You probably better give it five percent so no one gets sued. There is a story. I would, do, I would yeah. say, uh, "Oh nah, no, nah, no, nah, do it." <laughs> <laughs> there was a story about the friends in low places, right? Where there was one individual in the room that just brought did like one word or something, right. and he had to get a co-write credit, he got full credit, really? That's, yeah, that's but that's a good day. that's Nashville because, like, and I know some of the pop world stuff when there's like there's a beat maker and. There's like a 13 writers on a song, and everybody it looks at the number of words, and they add them up, and they slice and dice by the number of words, and then they, there's like, yeah. pers- if there's three people in Nashville, everyone's getting 33.3 percent, yeah. right? right? But in, in, in LA or in New York or Atlanta or whatever, and there's 13 writers there, it's weird. Bro. Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah that, that is one thing that's great, and like especially when we first started coming over here, you know, we were going in the rooms with like writers that are way better and more experienced than us, and they'd be like, no, we'll just share it out. It's all. Yeah. Like we'd maybe take an idea and they'd sit there and write the song in front yeah. of us. And be like, no, no, it's all good. Like so, I love that attitude. It's helping out, and then you know you got to yeah, put it yeah, out there. Yeah. But I think it's great that you guys are you're the type of artists that are 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 in the deep end of the pool, getting your hands dirty, so involved with everything. Um, you know, doing the writing because there are you know some <laughs> artists that just they just take the songs. You know, yeah, and that, and that's yeah. that's also that's also cool. Like yeah. I think for us to to feel like we're saying things that are going to connect with an audience and feel authentic, I think yeah. they've got to come from us. Sure. You know, ironically, the only two a couple of songs we've ever released that we haven't written were written by like you, yeah. you guys, <laughs> with so, you guys. Yeah. So kind of night, you got to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and I think I feel like they're both songs like. I think you guys should re-pitch that over here because they're just such, so good. such good songs. Well, thanks, yeah. man. Right. So, yeah, some songs that we got in the room and wrote together, you got to me that kind of night when I was the one. No sad songs. Were they all number ones? Yeah, probably, yeah, all yeah. of those were. So, yeah. oh, my yeah. God, I helped co-write four number ones. So i got to change my yeah. bio. But, <laughs> but you know what's great is that you guys are – these things, what's, what's really makes me proud is that these are a staple of your live show. Yeah, and let's face it, in this musical economy, taking the music to the people, directly to the people, is, is really a primary focus of where the music business is. Like, hey, let's create this community. Let's have this healing feeling. Let's have this special night together. Please buy a hoodie. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's <laughs> where we are right now. Well, I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, COVID just cemented for me how important music live music is. is. Yeah, yeah. Live music. I mean, yeah. I know we can be so connected via the internet, via our phones, but 
going into a room, watching a band or an artist and getting lost in that moment is something we all need to do more of. Yeah. And even for myself, like, you know, the most happiest I'm ever at ever are in my life is either when I'm with my kids and my family or literally when I'm on stage and everyone's in sync and you just know the band's cooking I can look over at Nick he's rocking it's like ah this this I love that like I have no desire I will tour until I die like I want to be in a wheelchair like getting my wife and kids to pick me up at hopefully 90 years old so I can keep playing I just Love it. That's and I live yeah. for it. Yeah. I just live so for it. So and it's got to be extra special that you guys are connected by blood. You know, you look over and you're like, oh, my God, it's my... Man, we came from the same place, literally. <laughs> right. um, so am I right in saying that you guys are um, your third-generation musical family? Yes. Well, actually, fourth. So where we come from in Tassie, we're fourth-generation farmers, raspberry farmers. B- uh, raspberry and blue... Uh, Raspberries, strawberries, cherries. That's um, good farming. Right? Oh, That's nice. good farming. Yeah. So we're like on the foothills of Mount Wellington in, in Tasmania, mm-hmm. so it's a little bit colder and stuff. Um, but, yeah, our great-grandfather bought the farm in 1899, so what's mm-hmm. that, 125 years? Oh, wow. Curly? Yeah. No, Curly was his son. Oh, okay. So, so Curly Wolf was his son, and he had his own Wolf family orchestra, which is his wife, our nan, and our dad, and his brother, and everyone played in. So wow. they always had the farm, but they always played music. Always played music. And I think Curly and our dad especially m- maybe wanted to do what we get to do. I sort of mm. feel like we're the beneficiary of like four generations of people who've just worked their ass off. Yeah. yeah. And we like get to actually do because dad would like say to us all the time growing up, don't worry about the farm. Just don't worry about it. Just do your music. Do what makes you happy. So, like, the fact that we get to do that. I mean, like, we're at work right now. We're at Nashville doing a podcast. You know, after this, we're going to go, like, to Loveless Cafe. This is our job. It's pretty easy. It's nice. Yeah. 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 And the funny thing is. Exactly. Your grandfather was in his half two years. <laughs> and now <laughs> yeah. you're, you're in your get to. Yeah. It's like a generational like thing at this point. Uh, it is. So, like, we feel very... Very fortunate to do it, um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of music. Dad, played, Dad was a drum. Dad was yeah, a drummer. Yeah, and, and you helped him cart his drums around to the casinos yeah. and the. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to take him to sound check, and if we'd been good, we'd get to bash the Rogers kid. He had them big seventies Rogers, you know, with like four toms. <laughs> Nick's got it now. It's like, it's like. Full Ronnie, Ronnie Tut, Elvis type. Yeah. yeah. We've we'll just built a shed and um, I'm so excited to get home and set up that kit. Like it's, <laughs> and it's sort of been sitting, you know, in uh, Tani's parents under the house, you know, gathering yeah. dust for a couple of years and it's like, we've got no really where to set this up. And You're going to set them up. Set them up. Dad's drums. I'm going to um, get a little PA, you know, and just... Bash the hell out of it! I love and, it. Uh, I, like I'm obviously a guitarist, but love drumming, and um, that's and had that that kit with that connection to dad. Yes. I can't. I just can't uh, wait. I, I feel like we're both frustrated drummers at heart because we both wanted to be drummers. But I'm dad, totally a frustrated drummer, dad, <laughs> but not because of my drumming. I'm just naturally frustrated. <laughs> ah, give me a symbol. <laughs> dad, dad was totally like, no, nah, you can't, you can't play drums. You yeah. can't play drums. I think because he was a drummer and he wanted to be in a band with us. He's like, you can't play drums. You got to be at the front. Front, dad like, was uh, dad's very Tom is very dad. Yeah, so, I'm you know, dad was a front man, but he was the drummer. Yeah, mm. yeah, because you know. you're always running around. I'm yeah. running around. But, and, and Tom's kind of the like I'm the singer, but Tom's yeah. the announcer. The I, I noticed yeah. that you do a lot of uh, housekeeping. Let's put our hands yeah, together, folks. Yeah, yeah. let's get yeah. out those lighters. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, so but so so Nick, you started on guitar, and you and Tom, you started on piano. So right. I started on piano. Um, and I did really enjoy that, but Nick's a little bit older. And then there came a point when Nick brought home Metallica's Master of Puppets. Oh, gosh. And we're in the lounge room and Mum's literally walking around going, this is the devil's music. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I, that was like, that was a light bulb. Like, what's Ooh, that, you yeah. know? And, like, we grew up listening to so much Was it country. the album or the song that got your attention? It was Master of Puppets. The like, actual song? And, you know, this is... Dad. Dun, 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 from from yeah. Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Before Stranger Things. And you got to think, this is, didn't have YouTube. We're probably the last ones that yeah. didn't have right. the internet. 
and all this stuff. So, like, yeah, seeing like if you, that if album. Yeah, like, if you wanted to hear something, it was given to you by, like, a, a cooler older kid at yeah. school. Yeah. Or, you know, your, your cousin who, yeah. who was, like, oh, that's so the charming. metal guy, you know. Oh, like, and, and you just didn't, you'd never heard of it before. Like, I can right. remember our older cousin gave us Live After Death, I Maiden on Vine. Iron Maiden, yeah. And we were just like, what? What is this? Yes. What is this? Who is Eddie? Yeah. Why are they galloping all yeah. the time? Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 so yeah. that yeah. as soon as Nick bought that home, <laughs> piano was gone, I went and bought a bass <laughs> bought a bass guitar. <laughs> and I, started I, like, do- <laughs> I wanted to do that with Nick, so <laughs> Did you ever get into any of the bootsy pop slap stuff a little bit? A little bit during yeah. school, I yeah. liked that. But um that was that's probably that's not my vibe. It's almost good that you don't that bass players don't know how to pop and slap because unless you do it really well, it's just it's, it's very don't abrasive. Do this. It's very, I one hundred percent agree. <laughs> actually, we, we we went down to Broadway uh, the other night. Well, the other day actually, we were too old to go at night. So, uh, <laughs> day day we, drinking. We, we, uh, Literally at one o'clock. Win the day and uh, yeah, we saw some completely inappropriate. Slap moments, oh, you know. All like, these guys are like, like, I will always love you. Stop, Toby. Right. You know, here's okay. You brought up two two very key songs. Here's the funny thing, Master of Puppets. When that song came out, the general public, what you know, you were a metalhead if you were into that song, yeah. right? So here it is. It got your attention. And fast forward for you know thirty some odd years. Ouch. And it's one of the biggest. It was one of the most downloaded songs because of Stranger Things. Because mm. it was like a People it was had never heard of it. With, uh, Will Ferrell, when they abducted the kids for their, their rite of passage into the fraternity, they that's the that's the abduction song. <laughs> right. But I mean, here's the other thing. You bring up Don't Stop Believing, and I always ask this to our guests that come on. Do you think that Neil Sean and Jonathan Cain were thinking, we, we are writing the hit of hits right now? You know what I mean? Sure, Probably not. Surely they must have known they were on the stunt. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're on. I guess you never know, do you? This yeah. is going to pay for our great grandchildren's yeah. uh, lifestyle. I don't know. Like I don't know. I mean, I'd like to think they they thought, geez, we've we've got a good one yeah. the day. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like yeah. sometimes we've been in writing rooms and written songs and gone, that's the best thing we've ever written. And then yeah. gone away three days and listened to it and gone, what are we that what is are we actually the worst about? thing yeah. we've musically <laughs> created. <laughs> You know, it's, I think once they go out into the world, it's like they can do anything. And then you see, you see now older songs, as you said, like that reconnect yeah. through the internet and TV shows and stuff. So, it, yeah, it, it just depends. I mean, you, you look at uh, Faith No More. You know the song that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, um, we care a lot. Yeah, mm. that thing is used everywhere. Yeah. It's mm. like, who would have thought those guys back in 1988 were like, oh, yeah, this is going to be, you know, they came out with the real thing and, and you know, you know, uh, what's that song? Um, Can you feel it? See it? Hear it today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That song, that was a huge hit for them. Yeah. But here's like before Mike Patton was the singer of Faith No More. Yeah. We Care A Lot was in Dirty Jobs. It was It's used for production yeah. stuff. I heard it recently on something else. I'm like, this. these guys must be making bank off this. Yeah. You know what? And it was also a no-no back in the day for, you know, artistically for an artist to license their song right out of the gate. They would wait right. till like, their um, get-to years, yeah. and they would be like, okay, <laughs> so let, let's, let's make some money. Yeah. But now it's like, hey, if you can find a home for your music, I mean, anywhere, mm. do well, it. video games. Yeah. Look yeah. at Dragon Force, right? Remember yeah. those guys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fire in the Flames. That was the that was the um, uh, supreme boss level music uh, song. You had to play on Guitar Hero. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it was yeah, yeah. so fast, you know? yeah. and that put them on the map. Jim, your you know? your Spotify playlist is like all. You're like yeah. a closet dad metalhead. I, well, I've always been to the heavy stuff. Yeah, you know. Well, but I mean, I'm, I'm eclectic. I'm all over the map. I'll listen to Bad Religion, then I'll go to, you know, country stuff, yeah. and then I'll listen Huey Lewis and the News. I've been in a big cook, kick, big kick for that. Jim recently. is all about Huey. Yeah, Huey's Huey's nothing great. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Right? Huey's fantastic. You know yeah. what? What I was going to ask you guys is, you mentioned your, you know, five guys band of brothers on the road. Yeah. Um, you've always had great drummers. I we were all at the Red Door the other night. Kip Allen has played for you, and yeah. your current drummer David, fantastic. So it was like a drum nerd moment. <laughs> Tell us about your current band. Yeah, so Dave Roberto on drums. Yeah. Um, Dave's fantastic. He's as invested in the band as as like we are. Yeah, he's um, got a studio back in Melbourne. Um, he's sending tracks all over the Is world. Is that him on Damn Good Mates and all the new stuff? Uh, he's on a lot of our yeah, new yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, Ironically, we were in town um, and we bumped into a bunch of Canadian artists, and and I'm like, hang on, 
I'm like, our drummer's played drums on your yeah. stuff. And I'm like, he's here. From his living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's so, great. so that's been really cool. Um, our brother, Brody Rainbird, yeah. who used to be an official member of the group yeah. when we first met. I was going to slowly ease yeah, my way into yeah. that. So Brody, um, Brody stepped back to, uh, as an official member a couple of albums ago. Like, I think creatively he wanted to sort of create his own voice, which is which is totally fine. Um, and we were like, we don't want you to leave. He's like, well, I, he's like, I... He's like, I just want to be able to do my music. He said, but I really love to play every gig wow. with you still. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah wow, wow. So, it's kind of a weird setup. But yeah. It works. Yeah. It works. Um, and we've got a, a new guy who's been with us um, since, actually, ironically, he did two gigs with us before COVID hit. So we thought he was like the bad luck charm for about two years. <laughs> Scott Target, and he's playing keys. He's playing harp. Great singer. So the band now, I, we think the band's the best it's, Musically, it's ever been. Okay. Like it's a, wow. it's just a powerhouse. Yeah, life. it's n- amazing when that happens. Oh, right it's just it's like you can't. Yeah, can't replace. So I just feel. knew something was going on because I was like, you know, so Brody was the third official member, and then yeah. all the marketing is like on the covers of albums would be like three of you guys, and it was like, oh, it's like a Rascal Flatts vibe, right? Yeah. And now there's like just two. Of you. Yeah, like, what yeah. happened? We lost so, the good looking yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. So we have to write better songs. No, um, yeah. I mean, look, it was it was very natural. Thing and um, you know, like our, our journey's been a, a big journey of coming over here a lot, yeah. And I think just before COVID, we, we signed a, a deal with Broken Bow, and um, yeah. which means we were going to spend a lot more time here, here, yeah. And I don't, he was pretty keen to be more home in Australia, so yeah, it was, it was very like it was a painless sort of thing, it was no like arguments or anything, like. It was just sort of naturally what he wanted to do. And he's, yeah, and I guess it's kind of hard as a as a fan to kind of understand that because typically if there's not a guy on the cover anymore, something bad happened. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah. It, it didn't. It it's didn't. Just like, it did. I think it's testament. So he's still playing all the shows. He's just – it's not, Honestly, yeah. if, if anything, like our relationship with Broad is the best it's ever been. Yeah. It's best you know, like, Wow. Because we're all just doing what we want yeah. and there's no kind of – and it's really great. Like, we show the boys, obviously, stuff we've recorded. Sometimes they play in the recording, sometimes they don't. But recently we showed them some stuff we've been writing and, re- and demoing up, um, you know, that they hadn't been involved in. And I was like, hey, boys, in the van, I'm like, check this out. And it's really cool. Brody's like, that's the most Wolf Brothers stuff I've ever heard. So, yeah, it's like a family. Yeah. Actually, ironically, we were all texting each other before we come here and we're like, it's been too long away from each other. We've yeah. got to get back in the van. We've got to get back on the we road. Yearn. We yearn. We yeah. yearn for the, the road. At the end of every one of our tours, we're just like, all right, that was great. Now it's time for, you know, some, you know, uh, peanut brittle and my mom's cookies yeah. and a little, maybe it'll snow here and we'll, it's the holidays. We'll take a break. And then that second week of January comes around, we're like, well, we are ready yeah. to get <laughs> yeah. back out with each other. Well, you would have, done, like, you just know. toured your entire, I'm assuming most of your entire life. And you yeah, that suitcase you is always what, packed, man. You know what to do yeah. when you're not doing it like. right now it's been weird it's been weird going from 225 shows a year to about 50 shows a year i have more time which means i have more responsibilities i have a honey do list i got to make sure that there's food in the refrigerator i actually have to clean the house and just do normal things and when you're gone all the time you just really don't have to deal with that stuff do you do you still enjoy <laughs> touring as much i do man i i you know i i mean i love being in a recording studio with some some air conditioning and some great coffee yep. and you're looking in the whites of some people's eyes and you know they're all going to change history it's going to affect but there's just something about uh, being a troubadour and taking the music directly to the people yeah. I love it I like the balance of the two Yeah, you know the idea of somebody just having a studio tan and just doing two <laughs> sessions a day five days a week I don't know, man. Yeah. I, it's actually ironic. So you guys have all p- like played together for like... 25 years. Like us years. and Brian, yeah. like yeah, forever. Totally. Yeah. So you guys must be a pretty tight... There's a secret language. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't even need to say what the next person is. It's just like... It's just like Aquaman and you'd like, oh, I get it, yeah. That's And playing-wise, you guys would know what you're about to do and you just got you'd already be going with it telepathy yeah i mean awesome. it, it really is now now we're just talking about being in the studio we years ago we wrote together first it was a writing relationship set up by your manager <laughs> was and we, we became fast friends and it was like oh my god this is amazing and you guys were nice enough to and ask can me I to just, play, can yeah. I just jump yeah. in and say like rich went so above and beyond like we didn't know Rich from Bar of Soap, and you know we were big fans. I think you know particularly the early Our Dean stuff. Like 
that you guys did that that kind of we that made us kind of go, man. I think what we do is going to work in country, yeah, because you, it's you blew here. the gates open, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you just went above and beyond. And you know, Steve, our manager, reached out to Rich and said, "Oh, do you reckon um, you, got, you could hook up the boys with a couple of rights?" He, he booked like three weeks solid of rights for us. Like he didn't have to do that. <laughs> at all. You know, didn't he didn't have to do that in any way, shape, or form. But man, we're so thankful. The songs that were born out of the relationships, it's amazing. You know. Wow. Is this? It's yeah. just, I appreciate it, and it's like I, I don't feel like I did a thing, but it's like these little gestures you can make during your lifetime can affect the trajectory of. of I mean, it's it's, it's, it's to affect it out. I mean, I feel like if I come to Tasmania, I got a place to stay. You know, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the door, the door is open <laughs> anytime. Yeah. I always say that yeah. the, uh, uh, funerals are going to be either people are there for the true, they want to honor the person, they want to yeah. really uh, you know be there, because, and, and it's going to be kind of that thing. Or funerals could be networking events, right? <laughs> I think in Rich's case, it's going to be you know the first option. I mean, yeah. it's, you've, you've been so good to people over the years. So though, good, you know? man. You, you, you're going to have a, you're going to have an outpouring. Yeah, you know? man. Like well, it's, it's hopefully it's not soon. No, <laughs> no it's not going to be soon. Many, no. many, many years away. Many, many years away. Yeah, uh, but you ha- you have gone above and beyond for us, and like some of them songs that were born in them riding trips. Like a, a sad song. Well, and I learned, stuff. I, you guys helped me learn how to craft a song. And, you know, because I'm not a, a, a guitar hero, I just, you know, I think it's, I think drum, all drummers could be natural writers because we're we're in the best seat in the house taking it all in, yeah. you know, yeah. the mm. whole the whole vibe of an organization. And you guys were nice enough to ask me to come play drums on this crazy life. And I went back, this is coming up on, God, it's going to be 10 years oh, old. Yeah. Wow. How could that be? I was listening to it like, man, these songs are great. These arrangements, are, the mix is nice. Luke Wooten, yeah, I yeah. guess. Pretty, Look at that. Um, sometimes you can let something air out. You give it some space. You you revisit it, and you're like, this is straight up like Steve Earle, Melon Camp, like like it's a good record, guys. Well, I I, I thought Thank it was you. pretty good. Too. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely know what you mean with letting it air out, and I, that that record particularly, I've, 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 that's one for me that. In the recent years, I've gone back. Yeah, we we did pretty good on Job this. Well yeah. done. I, I agree. Yeah. And all of those songs came from that writing trip, which is a really cool. So that record is like a little piece of time. It's not like your first album; you got yeah. your entire yeah, life. Yeah, that write. was one. We came over. We had nothing. nothing. Yeah, and that I don't think even think we had ideas. So we, yeah. I think we were touring really hard before we came over, and then it, it dawned on us: oh, you're going to Nashville tomorrow to write and then record. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so no, that, that is as you say, Tom, a real um, capturing that moment in yeah, time, that chapter, and yeah, obviously very special. That we, is a great we're one. So, we're so glad to have you as a part oh, of it. Oh man! And, and it was just yeah. like Rich is in the studio, and we just love when Rich is like proper. Oh, he's just an energy. And he do a take, we'd be like, you give it. A bit more, you know, don't yeah. big feels, and it was, they need like to get it to me, like, yeah, <laughs> there's, well, a of, there's a lot of blue, blue blackums in that yeah. record. Yeah. There's, there's some big jagu jagu. Well, you think of uh, like a throw back was a song that's really that's been in the set since that day, and it will know? be forever, like, yeah. It's just a staple. And, and you played on that one, and that you know, I remember you coming out after that one, just covered in sweat, yeah. You yeah. Know? I think you bought like four t shirts. <laughs> I, I bring a shirt for every song, yeah. You do, yeah. yeah. That, that's good. I mean, that, that's that is a massive part of why that song's so cool. You can't program you can't. that. No. You can't. Oh, so, wait a minute, you change your shirts between song recordings, yeah. Is so do you do that all the time? Well, sometimes if it's a nice Americana thing or, you know, a sweet, you know, troubadour girl, you know, and we're it's brushes, I, probably not. But oh. they're always there in case it gets heated and they're like, all right, Rich, a little bit more Tommy Lee. And then then you got to change the shirt. Yeah. After, yeah. You know. And well, I guess I, you can't have a fan on you because it's going to be picked, yeah, up, picked up by the mics. So. Uh, yeah. Nick, Nick is so right, though. Like, you can't, you know, I know we live in a time where you can program everything and yeah. basically not touch an instrument to record, but you can't. Replicate feel yeah. like that f- feels right. so great, and that's because there was a guy in the studio working Giving his, his art. absolute all. Yeah, yeah. like literally all the, the all shit them. out of it. Like, all you guys, man, just just bringing bringing that you know that passion. Um, 
And that's a big part of your your sound and your lineage is that that country rock vibe. Absolutely. Um, and then there were some departures, you know, some programmy poppy type stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you had this record. Um, uh, well, the first one you got it's on 2013. Nothing but trouble 2014. Got a live record live at CMC Rocks 2015. This crazy life we just talked about. about that one. Yeah. The country heart 2018. Now this kids on cassette. 2021 and live in the dream 2023 is the latest one kids on the set cassette is that that was kind of a little bit of a tip of a hat to like new wave you've got some sense yeah, happening yeah. And, and i think that was that was during covid we were putting that one together it started yeah. before and then we didn't scrap a lot of it but we we're like no nah, but then i think that's totally where we want to head that was the lockdown yeah, yeah. yeah. session so right that, that you guys... was a lot of like I was doing a lot of it at home, yeah. um, piecing it together with what we've done. Uh, Johnny Gasparic in Canada, we, we would send stuff to him. He would do stuff, you know, um, Matt Fell at home. She's at home. Uh, Lindsay Rhymes over here. So that that was a real, like, through the internet collab. Yeah. I, 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 I really liked that album and, and I'm really somehow, proud of it. I, somehow it came together yeah. I, and I think it works as an album. But it, you know, it very easily couldn't have because it yeah. was so random. Yeah, you know. Um, but be proud of that one. But I've got to say, after that, our kind of instinct and kind of reaction was like, okay, we did that. We want to get back to what we do basics now. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> feel like we scratched that itch, and so you know, living the dream. We, we got a new producer, Rob McCormack, who's a guy we've worked with in, on different things with Lee Kernigan over the years, yes. and always had such mad respect for him because he's like, we we say Rod is God. Basically, he is like a banjo champion. Mandolin phenomenon, um, guitar phenomenon. I'm not just like, saying this. One, of the, one of the best musicians anywhere I've, I've this ever planet. encountered in this planet. And is he in Tennessee? Mm. He's, He's in, in Sydney. Up, up Sydney, Sydney yeah. Sydney. So you got to go to the the LA of Australia do, yeah, to hook yeah, up yeah. with so, him. Yeah. So Rod, this is we got the golden mentioned the golden guitars. Yeah. With the golden guitar awards. Nine um, of them. Uh, we've got nine of it, but there's Rod's got more. Yeah. <laughs> but there's this. Golden guitar performance from the mid '90s. You can find it on YouTube, and they're having a bit of a guitar off. And the players are Rod McCormack, Tommy Emmanuel, mm -hmm. a young Keith Urban, and I want to say Albert Albert Lee. Albert Lee, Whoa. and they're having this guitar off. I mean, you're talking about some of the greatest players, and Rod just wipes the floor. Yeah, like mm. he's just phenomenal. Um, so. <laughs> Gone back to him for living the dream and just said we want to make a country rock record and that was a, like a pleasure, like yeah, a pleasure was, for us. Absolutely nice. delightful, you know. And but even that, um, we were fly Dave was flying, shooting the drums in from his studio yeah. in Melbourne. Nice. And then what we what we're doing now, we're in the midst of recording another one with Rod, but we're like, you know what? Like everyone's programming drums or sending them remotely. We play really well as a band. Why Why are we, are we not, like, yeah. in the studio together doing what we do best? I, I think COVID and everything kind of was the yeah. last yeah, couple of so hours. Is this really happening cool. now? You guys are all yeah. in one room? Yeah. So nice. we're all one room. We've done, like, done seven <laughs> songs like that, back in the room, back, and that's kind of, that's the first time we've done that since Crazy Life. Yeah. You know? Okay. Wow. Yeah, we've Great. Got, yeah. We've got the new one coming out. It just seems July. like seems like such a no brainer. I don't know why. I don't you know. know. Like I think you, doing this, you creatively you go different ways. Like if you'd ask us at the time when we were making when we did Country Heart, we were really ready to do that album. When try we, try something. Else. And when we did yeah, Kids yeah. on Cassette, we like we really wanted to like try some retro wave pop things. I know that sounds weird, but that's creative. We were like. Yeah, I want to get that sound. So it's I, been a little blessing and a curse that our musical tastes are so broad. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think in some ways maybe we have would have been more successful if, if we were just in the country. Yeah. You know, but then again, maybe not. I yeah. think that's kind of the beauty as well is that we've had all these other instrument <laughs> influences and stuff we've been into and drawn on them. And, and, and I mean, art, you know. like it's art. Like you can't, no. I mean, we could probably could just make the, like, you know, there's a lot of artists who make the same album like over and over again. Like we don't really want to do that. Like I'm, I'm very proud of everything we've done and I can sort of go back to those moments in time and go, when we made that, that was us being our most mm -hmm. authentic self. So, yeah. So that's. 
the re- uh, the records are this, this beautiful snapshot in time, this it body is. of work. It's this, yeah. it's this ten year journey starting in 2013 and now 2023, and then you get to cherry pick all the greatest yeah. from yeah. each record and put them together for that Matt live show. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's hard to get set lists together now. Yeah, it's just yeah, do you do, do you set it and forget it for the year? Sometimes, or sometimes. Do you change it all. The time? It's always the staples, yeah. uh, but it is nice to have those slots in the set where you you bring something back. Yeah. And you know, you, you, you see, kind of see online. Maybe people will be asking for a tip. You know, one song kind of have a little bit of a cult moment where, yeah. like, uh, there's a song, uh, "Red Dress," and a lot of people online like, "Oh, you never play Red Dress." So we've been bringing that one back lately, and, and that's like off our second album. Was never never a single, single, you know, just. So yeah, it's, it's nice to do those things, and for our benefit as well as you know, people want to hear those those yeah. kind of deeper cuts, which is really nice. So. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, there's nothing in the, the big machine that, you know, sends people to the deep cuts these days. Obviously, it's, you know, the singles on the playlist, the radio, whatever. Like, it's, it is nice that people take yeah, the time yeah. to, to listen to the album. You it know? is nice. You know that song you guys have, Damn Good Mates? It reminds me of Tracy Lawrence's You Find Out Who Your Friends Are. <laughs> yeah. It's right. It's yeah. kind of like yeah. – but, and it's, it's culturally, it's like mates. It's oh. like, you know, that's a specific thing to your country. Oh, uh, well – like that was one we did never expected to like do as no. well. It was done for Lee Kernigan's twenty fifth anniversary, and for people who don't know who Lee is, um, Lee is like the best way to describe Lee Kernigan. He's like the Garth Brooks, Brooks of, of Australia, Australia yeah. if that makes sense. <laughs> so he, we were his band for like icon. A while. Yeah, he's an icon. We, yeah. we, we did like we were his live band. So and, you were his live band and his opening act for right? like a decade. Amazing. Yeah. So um, which was it was going to be one tour. The first it was going to be one tour, and it ended up being ten years. We just had this wonderful relationship. Nick's written a bunch of stuff, recorded a bunch of stuff with him. That twenty fifth anniversary album, we we all recorded that with him together in the studio. So. That was that was a relationship we never because we were fans. Yeah. Like Lee is like the Australian country king, you know. He's singing like songs like "She's My Ute" and "Outback Club" and "Boys from the Bush." And when you're like 17, country kid in Tasmania, like they, yeah, you can absolutely. We yeah. used to go to his gigs at the casino and like get kicked out because we'd be like trying to. Stage dive, <laughs> you know, like you can imagine. He, he loves, loves you guys. Are metal he loves heads you guys. Oh, yeah. He's just been, been the most wonderful working relationship, wonderful friendship. Um, and and it was actually Lee's idea. He's like, I want to do this. Damn good mates together. He's like, I think that really, really sort of summarizes our relationship right. and friendship. And nice. it's really connected. Like it's even we saw him recently, and he's like, geez, he's like. She's that one just that one just shot out of the gate and done yeah. well. So that's that's in every set forever. So yeah. where where was the ten years? Was it pre two thousand thirteen? So he no. So during all of this. During yeah. during all okay. of this. Yeah. Um, he saw us on Australia's Got Talent. So mm. two thousand and twelve, we went on Australia's Got Talent. Um, I don't want to say reluctantly, but it, but going on reality TV was probably yeah. not part of the plan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Prior to that, we were in Tasmania. We were basically a cover band, had a, one original EP out with a few songs that was country rock, you know, very influenced by the, the early you guys, scenes, <laughs> you know. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, all that stuff. And um, But we could not get arrested outside of Tasmania. Yeah. Like, it was just, we couldn't get a gig, you know. No one, why would they want to get a band from Tasmania when there's all other guys yeah. doing this, you yeah. know. So we were working with a, a manager at the time, and she said, well, well, maybe, you know, have a go at Australia's Got Talent. We're like, oh, no, 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 no way. No, we don't want to do that. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. We want to make it on our own. But yeah, what yeah. changed your mind? Well, she said something really interesting. She said, <laughs> she's like, I can't get you booked for any gigs, mm-hmm. like outside of Tassie. If you go on the TV show, if you do a half-good audition, she said, like, that's national TV, that's national exposure, there'll be a good clip of you playing live that'll exist on the internet forever. She's like, all of a sudden I might be able to get, instead of getting $1,000 a gig, I might be able to get you five grand. At a fe- I'll be able to get you festival spots. And we went, oh, okay. Man, okay. What, what? Well, keep talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You got our yeah. attention now. Yeah. It was like, well, what have we got to lose? <laughs> and, you know, the stars aligned a bit because that year they were wanting to put a focus on original music. Yeah. And I think we did... I think we did five or six performances and we only had to do one cover. Mm. Only had to do one cover song, which is pretty amazing, really. Yeah. They, they sort of really wanted us to do Big and Rich's Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, 
So we did that, I think, in our second <laughs> and, and that worked in our favour. That worked that, for us. That was huge at the time. And not in, the thing with Australia, country is not really mainstream as it is here. So, you know, um, if country gets a look in on mainstream TV, there'll always be a bit of a tone of, like, well, let's wheel out the hay bales. Yes. And, you know, it's not taken seriously. Let's get the boots scooting. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, so, but there's Kick always a huge it, yeah. fan base of country. Yeah. It's like yeah. massive, you yeah. know, but for some reason, weird thing doesn't, it's a bit of the poor cousin on mainstream, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but when we played Save a Horse, you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah that song. okay, yeah, that, yeah, we're that's into a this. rock song. We're into this, yeah. you know? and like people, like, people would come to gigs and like, oh, you didn't write that. Oh wow! And I was like, like no, 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 no. Yeah. And ironically, when we did the performance, there's the breakdown section, and it's like having ourselves a big and rich time. Yeah. And I said, I want to say Wolf Brothers time, mm-hmm. and the producers were like, no, you can't. They said, unless you get written permission. You can't say that. Exactly. So we, like, made it our mission. And this lady, Sharon, who was, like, helping us and managing us at the time, she got in touch with Big and Rich's team said, Wow. Boys are going on. Australia's got talent. Da, 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 they're going to do this. Yeah. They love the song. It'll be good for the song. All they want to do is say, having ourselves a Wolf Brothers time. Got the letter back. Went straight to the executive producers. And like, there you go. There's the <laughs> Nice. Uh, yeah, they, they didn't like us. Yet, <laughs> the other thing we did, too... Um, just, I don't know how this evolved, but the ending we used to do for Save a Horse was we, we, we borrowed a little riff from Pantera Cowboys from Hell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, we literally did that. And then, so that kind of had its own thing because, you know, all the metal guys sitting at home like, what is this? And then. Oh, what's, oh, what was that? What's that? Yeah. 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 Sounds familiar. And, and yeah. the guy actually messaged me recently is a, who who remembered it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, were you guys Pantera fans? Like, yeah. were you into that kind yeah. of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Did you catch so, him on the latest tour with the, I guess, the tribute I did, actually. cover act that they've done? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I th- personally, I thought it was done very tastefully. So, yeah. you know. They um, picked good guys. Great guys. Yeah. And, you know, there was a huge kind of tribute. Yeah. To Dime and, and Vinny. Um, yeah. Weird story of that. So they were a big band for me growing up. Uh, and I, I never got to see him in the, yeah. the original lineup. So, of course, I, I went along, saw him in Brisbane, loved it. They had a few technical issues. The the PA kind of died mm-hmm. um, midway through the first song. And, oh, really? You know, um, which was pretty unfortunate. But um, then they got it back and it was, it was pretty good. I mean, you got Benante on drums playing that game. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Zach, Zach Wild. Wild on guitar. <laughs> Speaking so, of which, you know, because they did tour with Metallica, that was the first leg of that tour. Yeah. Uh, and Metallica keeps uh, coming up on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, you were mentioning covers before. Um, you know what? I was, I've been thinking. It hit me the other day in the shower. And I said, you know, if anybody wanted this really kind of, you know, hit it big and become real mainstream, kind of like what, uh, what, what, what Luke Combs Luke Combs, yeah. He did, he did the Tracy Chapman Tracy song. Tracy Chapman, yeah. What if uh, Nothing Else Matters was redone? Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? I, have had, I actually have had that thought, too. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah that's another sign from the universe. <laughs> although, right. although I feel like the thing with Metallica, like, pretty hard to do if you're not Metallica. Like, yeah, and, of course. And I think you're going to get a lot of, a lot of hate, the you group. know, like. Yeah. As a Metallica fan, like, if pretty much if I heard any, anyone else, I'd be like, nah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. Uh, just to get back on that on the Pantera thing. So yeah. went to see him the next morning. I'm flying home, and uh, you know I was feeling you know, I was on a real high because this is a band that was a pivotal part of my guitar playing, like, oh, yeah. learning, and you know, and I'm obviously still ripping off dime bag licks and stuff like that. So standing in line to board the plane, I look down at my feet, and there's two guitar picks, <clears throat> and. Like, oh, yeah. And look a bit closer, and it's they've got Dime's face and Vinny's face no. on these guitar picks, right? Really? And I'm not looking around, thinking like, is someone it's playing been- a, a joke on me or something? Here, you know? And no, it's just all you know, business guys boarding the plane. So I like, pick him up. I'm still looking around, like, what's that? <laughs> anyway, like I, I put it on Facebook that night or whatever, and like all the Pantera guys are like. Wow, how did you get this? You know, like because I thought maybe you can just buy them. Mm-hmm. Like, surely no one would be so careless if like they were the picks from stage. Are they just like, fell out of their pants or yeah, something? Yeah, like, must have, must have. They were the picks from stage. That, <sighs> did you? I mean, did so, you guys ever think about putting stuff like that into your set? 
when you're playing? Like, you know, just sometimes a little out of left field Pantera cover we or something? Do, what we do, we do a couple of little cover things in the yeah. show. We have um, this thing we call the Ozmed. Mm -hmm. um, so another big part of our sort of sound and where we come from is Australian pub rock. Right. So acts listeners will probably know is like in excess yeah. Um, yeah but there's a couple of bands you probably know midnight oil too oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but other bands in australia like the angels they didn't mm -hmm. make it as big over here cold chisel incredible incredible band culture uh cold, cold chisel cold, cold chisel, chisel. Yeah. yeah yeah sorry that's my australian accent um, yeah, Great. There was such a wonderful Australian pub scene in the 80s, but this, this the radiator, so, so much, the vinyl, so much good music came out of yeah. That is such a big part of Australian culture scene. Like, if, the, if you're doing cover gigs and pub shows, you're playing a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Really? So really. We and they're do all anthemic. Anthemic yeah. stuff. So we do, like, a, it's like about eight minutes long, and we've put, like, six, seven of them together mm -hmm. in one sort of eight-minute song, and it is, like... The most fun to play live. Like, if you don't feel proud to be Australian after that, then <laughs> I, I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. So, so yeah, we do little bits and pieces like that. We jam bits and pieces at Soundcheck, but I mean, we've got six albums. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And predominantly, like, predominantly, people want to hear us. But it's cool to kind of like you make that connection, and it's so much more because a lot of metal guys, a lot of hard rock guys like me that grew up with that music, now country is that pill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we the way we do it is not like we not we're not play like a Pantera riff, but right. You know. We'll, we'll a little nodder. Uh, we'll wink. be we're doing a solo that yeah. that'll be a complete yeah dime bag rip off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, that's fine. That's fine. Let well, me ask you this because I heard you guys were you know before you're going to perform a song here. Hopefully, yeah, when sure. the guy finishes weed whacking. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. really into maintaining his <laughs> yeah. lawn. It's got to look well good. maintained <laughs> out here. It's well maintained. It's got to look good. <laughs> you got to make sure the lawn looks good. <laughs> the um, you, you guys played a little bit before we went live, so to speak, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you, you can't you can't tell you're from Australia, you know. Yeah. You have you got you got the rubber band thing going well, on. Well, that's, that's can you speak like that? No, like if you had to, can you sound American? If can you I speak to? American? Can you uh, speak American? No, nah, not really. So. Great question, yeah. Thank you. I can kind of like do. A, I have a character that I go like, you know, do you guys want any sodas? Like that's about. That's about that's about. That's I great. What that's was the amazing. one? Because here's the thing: it's like I've tried to do like British. I do a lot of voiceover for a yeah, living. Yeah, sure. British is awful for me, yeah. and so is I mean, my Australian, Australian is not very good. I, yeah. I sound like freaking Ringo. But those Australian yeah. actors that come, oh, you guys gosh. are sort of in the water. They come over and you cannot. No, I think we have so much well, American TV, and you know, so we, we've heard Chris it so Hemsworth. Much in our life. Yeah. Can we, Chris Hemsworth in uh, Red Dawn. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. I, I'm like, okay, you're trying too hard. Yeah. Sure. The one yeah. I used to do was um, a, long time ago. a lady, when we played one of the shows over here, we did a cover of Dust on the Bottle. <laughs> and she, she said, hey, can you say my name? Like, oh, oh, yeah, what's your name? Da, da, Darlene. Oh, good on you, Darlene. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> when you guys played Dust on the Bottom. No, no, she said, <laughs> when, you, when you guys played Creo Williams. Creo Williams. <laughs> yeah. Call, you you, you just had it right there, buddy. <laughs> when <laughs> you guys played Creo Williams. Like, so we toured, That's we toured a lot. We got on the county <laughs> fair circuit over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we toured all through the Midwest doing a bunch of... Like, we did some really cool gigs. I for Dustin Lynch. I yeah. like a young band. Got to play, uh, I think it's Country Concert in Ohio, which is like 40,000 people. Yeah. yeah. Got to do some really cool festivals. And then we'd do one of those, and then the next night we'd go and play next to a corn dog stand yeah. in the middle of nowhere. So, like, we, we saw... A lot of this country, in particular the Midwest, yeah. and, it was, and loved it. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and you can do so much by bus. But when you're in you're back home and you're touring in Australia, it's impossible. Right? You have to do flights. Yeah, bus, tu t bus touring is not really a thing. There's been guys that have tried to do it, uh, but I think maybe the fuel costs, the the road infrastructure, it just doesn't end well, up working. Well, if you break out. down in the middle of nowhere, yeah. you're attacked by a legion of, of muscular kangaroos. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real <laughs> risk, yeah. You know, uh, basketball-sized spiders. The, 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 the goal is basically we fly into a major city, rent a van, maybe a trailer, a couple of vans, and 
go from there, do yeah. a circuit, come back out, fly out of that. Now, so, now can you yeah. trust David as a driver, or is he the typical drummer that <laughs> do not let the drummer not dice, drive? That's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Drop. Good. Right. Why do you not let the drummer drive? Well, just we, we're dreamers, and we just start daydreaming, and we get tired <laughs> no, easily, and we start me. slipping that's off Tom. the road. That's, you know? see, I, that's, that's me. That, I would yeah. have to drive. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a driver. Control thing. Brody's yeah. very solid yeah. driver. Brody's a great you feel, driver. You feel safe with Brody at the nice. wheel? Yeah, I'm, I'm good for like half an hour. Then I'm like, <sighs> oh, what are we going to open the show with? And then you start dreaming. Oh, Tom oh. usually says, um, I've got, I just got to do some emails. And that, then someone else has to drive. So. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, he has to do a lot of emails when we pack up at the end of the night too. But, um, do you guys detect like when they hit the rumble strips on the side of the road? And like, okay, yeah, said it once. Yeah, I think All right, let's, let's you, swap you, it out, eh? You've yeah. hit it like three times in yeah. the last five minutes. So you got to, we got to change. Our, our roads are just not like what it is here. Like you can get on the interstate here and drive to another city, and like, it's just not like that in Australia. And especially playing in country, like we mm-hmm. go really regional. We'll go to a town that's like four people are there, you yeah. know, and we'll go play the, the the races or the the fair or the show or whatever it is. So we're very lucky in that regard that we get to go to these places and often. That those gigs for those places are the event of the year. Yeah. So yeah. like we get to see some really cool, really cool things. But you know you you might be driving on a road that's like two lanes, no lines, and yeah. you're doing that for two hundred k's oh, in a van. Oh my god, yeah. that's great. Like, I mean, so we have a because Tassie is an island, so we have all our gear in Tassie. We also have a bunch of gear in Sydney. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can you know if we fly to Sydney, we can put stuff in vans and trucks and right nice. take it out from there. So yeah, it's it's. Well, it's just what we know. Like it's just how we know yeah. how to do it. You know? What, yeah. is, what yeah. are some? And I know Jim would probably like to hear this, but straight from the horse's mouth, um, what are some common misconceptions about Australian life and culture? I think that the, the all the animals are, you know, going to kill you at every every <laughs> yeah. turn. You know, it's, it's pretty dangerous animals. Obviously, it's the but koala bears. You, got, watch. you guys have. Equally as dangerous yeah. animals, like, yeah. for sure. You know the um, brown recluse. You have to watch out for that in your Airbnb. <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, the stuff. Like there's spiders and there's snakes and stuff, but it's, it's not like you're not going down to like the local Kroger and it's they're going to be there. You know, like you've got to be out in the it's bush. Not crocodile Dundee, right? You know, no, like, and there is there is areas where there's crocodiles and stuff. Like we recently went up to Darwin, which is up the top of top end of Australia. Wow. Yeah, and there's you're like, not going to go swimming there. You don't yeah. go on the beach. Those yeah. are great weights. Great white, great white. Croc- that's cross. Cool. Crocodiles will take you on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you know that the signs. Yeah. It's like you like know. lethal jellyfish. That's a thing as oh well. Oh my yeah. god! Maybe, maybe there is a bit of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like where we where we are in Tassie, you can go to the beaches, and it's like a, you're not going to have that. Right. And if there is a, I mean, you touch wood, you might see the occasional shark. Oh, the other thing not. was too. Um, some people said to me the other night. So like in COVID, like the government was shooting people, weren't they? <laughs> and, like, uh, yeah, that no, no that, that, didn't that didn't happen. It, look, they locked down like Melbourne, in particularly in Victoria, was I think it was the most locked down place in the world, and you know completely over the top and sucked. But they weren't killing people. No, like, yeah, they no. weren't. They weren't shooting people. Well, how did yeah. you, with the lockdown? I mean, would, people could go grocery shopping, or they had yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. There was a bunch of different rules. Like you could go grocery shopping or to get food and things. Like, and then a lot of the rules contradicted. It. You know, like we could talk about. Talk about it for hours, which I'm yeah. not that over the moon oh, to. Oh, I hate talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't great. And the other misconception coming from Tassie, coming from Tassie, people always like ask us about the Tasmanian devil. Yeah, like mm. the Tasmanian <laughs> devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real. It thing. is a real thing. So kind of like a. It's kind of like a big cat. It's yeah. probably like not even a big. It's cat. not like oh, we see in the cartoon. Some like a honey, honey badger. Yeah. yeah. That'd be, yeah, yeah, that'd be a big one, I reckon. Yeah, that'd be a big one. Yeah. yeah. But they have, a like, a terrifying roar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're basically a scavenger animal, yeah. you know. Um, but I guess if you heard, if you were, like, an early settler and you were, you know, set up a camp in the, in the wilderness and you were sitting there and you heard this thing roaring, you would be absolutely Oh, my God. Oh, it's terrifying. Like terrifying. You know? Yeah. So, like, we've got, we got a friend who... But they don't, they don't, like, spin in a tornado. <laughs> no. Yeah. That was a, embellished yeah. by one of Yeah, I've got a friend... Yeah, that was a slight road. embellishment there, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like, hunting kangaroos 
really common at home, right, right. Um, like it would be deer here. And I've got a friend who hunts kangaroo. Oh, just for population control, yeah. And, you know, there's yeah. like 40, 50 million kangaroos. It's, wow. It's like 40, 50 four, million? There's like four kangaroos to every one person in Australia. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's like they're everywhere. Um, so and they're my, constantly flexing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They're, they're, just, they're just jacked. They are. You know? they are. Um, they are. So where we, where we live, a mate of mine who's got a farm up the road, he hunts a lot of kangaroo and, you know, the bits that he doesn't use, he'll just throw out to, and leave for the devils. And yeah. like you said, you can listen in the middle of the night and they come in and it's like, ah, I can't <laughs> 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 like, oh, it's, like ter- it's like terrifying. Yeah. It's like absolutely Which terrifying. Oh, my God. So, um, I've seen... And then, you like, don't see a lot of them. Left, like a, no, nothing. Yeah. They'll eat every bit. Yeah. Um, you don't see a lot of them. I reckon I've only probably seen on our farm, I've seen two. I've seen two in our yeah. farm in our life. Yeah. Um, so, What's pretty, the misreceptions you heard about America? Um, Before no, I saw them pretty, pretty spot on. <laughs> <laughs> we got some I wouldn't exactly story. call them yeah. misperceptions. I don't know. Like, we've spent a lot of time in this country, so, like, yeah. we, I, I <laughs> love it over here. I love, like, the people have been so good. I mean, geez. Have you, have you been to New York? I mean, haven't no. been to New York. No, yeah. Only been to LA for you like might, a day. Or you so. might change your mind. <laughs> but like, <laughs> definitely well, more into the vibe of over here, down here than LA. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. us. But and yeah. like going through the Midwest, like playing all those places, like all of those people were like <clears throat> salt of the earth, man. Oh, salt yeah. of the earth. Like if we could have said, "Can we have your car so we can drive up?" They'd be like, "Yeah, oh." Oh yeah! Did you ever get to Miami or South Florida? No, or? no, I never did that. Lots, no. of, lots to explore still. Yeah, yeah. like well, I mean, we sort of based here. And we wrote and record music, and then we jump in our Chevy Trailblazer with our trailer and head off to Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, played Chicago. You weren't that fond of Chicago. I wasn't a massive fan of Chicago. No, yeah. uh, I like the vibe. This wasn't my it's pretty good. Wasn't my scene. The big yeah. cities are yeah. They're I not, found it very acquired frightening. To you, know, be you know what? One <laughs> misconception I I had. Coming from Tasmania, it can be quite cold. Yeah. Like, well, I thought, yeah, I'll be right. When we were in Chicago, we had like half a day off. Mm. And I thought, well, I'm probably, I don't know if I'm going to get back here. So I'm, I put a jacket on. I said, I'm going to go for a little walk. And I got outside the hotel and I was like, oh, yeah. windy city. I jacket. could not breathe. So cold. yeah. The coldest I've been to this day was in Wisconsin. Oh, gosh. Walking from the car to the hotel room. The tundra. Uh, oh, it was like. You would have died if yeah. you had to stay oh, there. We were out there in like the middle of winter, so it was like minus 25 oh, yeah. or something. Like, now, you get, do you guys get the seasons in Australia, yeah. or is it mostly just warm? Yeah, I guess oh, I was going to say no. less extreme, but that's that's yeah. not true either because, I mean, we have cyclones, we have droughts, bushfires, and everything like that. But that's just different. Like, I mean, around here, you know, as we were commenting before, like, there's so much more timber or lumber, as you guys call it, in yeah, houses yeah. because the trees grow, like, everything so grows. fast. Like, everything's so green. It's the middle of summer and, yeah. like, it's green. as like, middle of summer typically in a lot of Australian places is dry, dusty, yeah. you know, yeah. but like harsh. Where, but where we are in Tassie in winter, it's more probably like New Zealand-ish. Mm-hmm. Like, we might get one snow. Mm-hmm. At our farm during well, it's during temperate, the winter, mild, temperate, yeah. mild. You know, but then you go right up north, and it's really quite tropical. Yeah, you know, like they, they'll have a wet season and a dry season. You mm. know, and there's like six months where it's just going to be like. It's so wet. funny to think about. I mean, like you know, the Earth is a globe. You know, yeah. it's, mm. it, it's, it's not flat. flat. It's not flat. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> you guys yeah. want to talk about that? No, no absolutely, absolutely not. not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny! Oh man, well, that's, it's just just so exciting, man. You you came, you made dreams come true. You're popular. Where, where else have you guys done any? Like, have you hit Europe or South uh, Africa? No. Or like, so, like, uh, I talk, spoke to you a little bit um, about our journey. Like, our journey, you know, been coming. This is the mecca for what we do, country yeah. music. So, we spent many years coming here, living here, doing all that stuff. Just before COVID, we signed with. Broken, BBR, yeah. With Broken Bow. We had the meetings with like John and Lynette, and they're like, you know, we put up a million dollars for a radio single. We believe in you guys. We believe in you as writers. You terrifying. Know, ter- like, it was terrifying. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. And they're like, you know, we want to do this, you know. Yeah. Um, and they were a really gr- global company. So they're like, we want you to sign with BMG Australia. We're going to do this. We're going to bring you over on tours. We're going to do the same in Australia, bring people over. So we're thinking like, oh my god, we're going to be out the road with you. Thinking yeah, like, oh my god, yeah. we're going to be with our dean. And, Would have been amazing. And we signed that a month before COVID. <laughs> oh um, gosh. So we were about to sign an international deal. 
Um, we were about to go to Canada and do like 35 shows. We were, had met the labels and stuff there. We we're about to set up sort of a base there, have a base here, have a base at home. Uh, and start sort of taking over the world, and then COVID hit, and it just all, <sighs> it just, it just didn't ha- like it just didn't happen. And I mean, that's so it's no one's fault. Like I saw John Lobar the other night, and he was like, "Come up, give me a cuddle." He's like, "Love you, boys. You're still family to us." And mm-hmm. he said, it, it, "It just is yeah. what it is." Like you we can't- have to kind of like r- rely on the fact that. Everything happens for a reason. It Definitely, does. you know, and and it actually hasn't been. We haven't been upset about it at all. Like some fantastic things happened during those years True. where we, we couldn't go anywhere with COVID. Tom's okay. now got two amazing kids. Yeah, that's what you were up to. Yeah, it's stay, you're touring musician, stay at home for a little while. You have two kids. Yeah, would have thought. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so I, I bought my own farm in the north of Tassie, and then kind of we're like, well, I don't think we want to really come back over here and start from zero again, and yeah, and do it. We really want to solidify in Australia and be one of those bands that's always going to be part of the landscape. If you want to, if you're going to. Go see live music this year. We're one, we're going to be one of the guys. Yeah, you know? yeah and, and, beautiful. And actually, it's been a little bit. Uh, it's almost been a little bit liberating in that regard because it's sort of like, well, you know, we're we're very proud Australians. Yes, love our country, love the people in our country. It's like, well, let's just be here, and and let's write songs that are really for Australian people. Yeah. Like we've we've got a new single coming out in July, and it's um, way more Australian. Than maybe some of the stuff we've done before. It's a lot of people with that pub rock influence in it. So, well, and the other good thing is, I think the Australian country radio landscape isn't as <clears throat> everything's not chasing exactly what's the hot thing right yeah. now. There's room for a bunch of different. That's great. Sub sub genres, yeah. whatever everyone's version of country is. That's all on the on the chart. And yeah. all on the, on the station, you know, so and accepted by the fans, really, yeah, yeah. really accepted by the fans. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with owning the, owning so your I'll, thing. I and love then, that yeah. about it. Yeah. I love that about it. And actually, it spun me out a little bit to be back over here. Like as Tom said, the thing we we're about to put out is very us, but it sounds nothing like what's the hot twenty on American nothing. country. At, it's interesting, you know, yeah. Because I, I think there's there's definitely a shift in culture happening. Yeah, certainly right now. And I'll give you guys an edge. Uh, if you want to be the next hot thing or start writing the next hot trend of country songs, uh, pay attention to what they wrote in the 40s and 50s, tonality-wise, right. lyric-wise. Because Jim has a theory. Yes. And pendulum. Pendulum. Book's right over there. Yeah. Ah, well, well, okay. okay. All right. Explain, okay. It, explain it really quick. Yeah, uh, okay. So basically, every 80 or every 40 years, we go through cultural shifts. Oh, uh, yeah. Right now, we just finished a zenith of what we call a we, where we're kind of like a, every time the pendulum comes to a zenith, it's when we take it a good thing too far. Okay. And right now, we just went through the darkest part of uh-huh. the 80-year swing. So <clears throat> we're on the downswing from a we going back to a tipping point, which is gonna, in the next 40 years is going to culminate to a me. Last uh-huh. time it happened was 1983, uh, and the tipping point into the last me was started in 1963. A lot of people think of the 60s, right? Yeah. Think 60s were really 1963 to 1969. Yeah. Right? So if you think about all the things that happened, a lot of people, there's different cultural attitudes that go along with mm. these cultural swings. So they're very captivating. So what's the intriguing. we versus me? So I would think that, that me pull. would be bad. No, no, no. None of them are good or bad. Oh, okay. It's, it's typically at the tipping point. Because we is like we are, you know, it's about us, and me is like, I don't care no, what you... No, it's... Um, I'm going to pull it up here. So, Man, I didn't expect this. Didn't expect me to <laughs> this, but I'm, I'm all about you. it. I'm all yeah. about it. It's, yeah. good. it's really intriguing. So, upswing we values, where we... Yeah. And the upswing from 03 to 23 was what we just went through. Uh, responsibility, humility, thoughtfulness, conformity, yeah. authenticity, which has been a big word it's over a the big last buzzword. 20 years, yep, yep. and transparency. So right. people, just be real with me. Oh, well, yeah. Let's all collectively come together. So when we take something too far, which is what we've just been through, yes. we literally lived through 1943 all over again in the last year. So now right. we're coming back the, down the other side. That's true. All those values become duty, obligation, sacrifice, regimentation, self-righteousness, and oppressiveness. Uh-huh. Mm. You have me at the duty. world. Duty. <laughs> duty. Okay. 
It's crazy, man. It's yeah. re- it really. I know what I'm going to be. Li- I'm going to be going search this and listen to this on my walks. It's Pendulum. Yeah. I'll show you the book. Yeah, when we're yeah done. we had the, yeah. the author on the, on the podcast yeah, years, years ago. Years, years. That was one of the zooms that we did. Yeah, yeah Michael Drew. Right. Yeah. Brody's going to love this. Brody's yeah. going to love this. Oh, is, is, is he a deep thinker? Like a history buff? He'll love this. Yep. I love that. But I mean, that's right now is when the voices in the wilderness start coming out. So the people that are going to start pulling that pendulum. Well, like we're wilderness, we're Tasmania. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, if you start writing songs that resonate with how people are going to start thinking. Well, I'll tell you you what we have done, and it's been lovely, and it's been liberating this trip, is we've just sort of gone, because we're not coming over here to be here and try and get a radio hit here. Yeah. We're just like, we're just going to write things we just really enjoy. And like even the song we wrote with you, one of the lyrics is um, from FNQ to all the way down south. Now, what we're saying, Australians will understand, we're saying FNQ is far north Queensland. Mm-hmm. From far north Queensland all the way down to south to Tassie. So, and when we've thrown those out in the writing rooms, guys like you are like, is that? We're like, no, 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 that's... That's us. That's us. That's so us. It feels... Great, like yeah. I feel, yeah, really, yeah. really. The pressure's off, so, and and you've proven yourself, and you could just exist in your own skin. And there's something very uh, comfortable and incredible uh, about being a, the big fish where you are. Yeah, yeah, and look, it's not even so much that. Like I, it's few things got cemented for me this trip. Um, you know, just artists who are just fully themselves ex- exploding. Like saw Cody Johnson at CMA Fest, and that guy is him. There's no, you know, yeah. uh, he started off with an intro tape with all these Texas songs. I thought, man, this is, this guy's cool. Came out and he had like a knife on his belt. I'm like, <laughs> this guy doesn't care what no. anyone thinks. And the, that was the loudest people were in that stadium all night. Like they just, I think people are seeing that. I think that's one of the positives with the internet and the way we are connected now. I think people see it. I mm-hmm. think people are seeing it a lot more. I think we're seeing a lot more crap and yeah. shit that we probably shouldn't. Right. But when something like that, stuff like that can cut through. Because, yeah. I don't know, like he probably wouldn't have been able to cut through in the industry in the way the industry and the record industry is here 10 years is, ago. It's like, radi- oh, it's got to be... Is radio still a main driver of everything? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm so unplugged from... It's been 20 Seems to be. Years. I mean, it seems to be. But I've, I've noticed this trip, I don't think a lot of the writers are dry as much for that because you're seeing us yeah. right. sort of explode and... How else can I get exposure, on, right? Yeah. Well, if something blows up on TikTok and... and YouTube and TikTok. Well, yeah. look at... look at What's his name? Uh, the guy who blew up... Oh, gosh. Old man brain. Um, oh. he, he, the, the men from up north. Uh, he was... He oh, was, Oliver... Al- Anthony, yeah. Oliver Anthony. Right. Right. Well, that's a well, great yeah. example. There's a guy like singing a song that he 100% believes. That's right. A, that's Pendulum. That's, that's Pendulum. Yeah. That's a boy. I'm, I'm, I'm saying he's a yeah. voice in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like, I mean, like, who would have ever thought that? So, right. Like, for me, I'm just going back to everything we do now. It's like I'm going to really rely on my gut instincts. Yeah. And if it doesn't feel right there, obviously we're a group, so, you know, I'm, yeah. I, but I'm always going to say, hey, just to let you know. Gut check. This doesn't yeah. feel great. Let's talk about it. Because we've definitely done things like in the past where labels have gone. This is, this is the, the smash. Single. This yeah. is this is going to take us to the world, and we've kind of gone. No. <sighs> okay. We'll okay. Go, we'll go with it, but yeah, it's not. It's no. not. Yeah. And it, that, it I mean, Cody Johnson. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, he's just doing what he wants to do. He's he is authentic. He's a super yeah. nice guy. I mean, some some stylist probably got a hold of him. and was like, hey, you're going to put you in these black skinny jeans. And he's like, no, no, I've got the Wranglers with the crease down the middle and giant belt buckle. Yeah, he's just doing his thing. And That's people great. are loving it. Yeah, awesome. People I would, I would be a publicist's worst nightmare. <laughs> I, I just want to wear, you know, cargo pants. Yeah, Me too. with a hammer holder. Well, you know what, and that's that's definitely a thing. I, that's a thing I've felt in this industry. Like I'm a bigger guy, and I've had people to tell me to lose weight and do yeah. this. And I'm dude, a, I I'm love at the a point fact now. I on, excuse my language. I don't, don't give a fuck. fuck. Right. <laughs> but you know what? And if you don't like me, fuck off. That, no, that's okay. Yeah. But here's the thing: is that you you also have the uh, you you loom large, so you're a very tall person. You you have yeah. a presence when you walk in a room, and I love Thank the you. fact that you're bringing back the hair. He chest. doubles as a muscle, the muscle of the band. Yeah. You know what I mean, he's like, but I mean that's but you're bringing back the hairy <laughs> chest, buddy. Yeah, I'm, for I'm, all I'm, us guys, I, I just I never I just can't you can't shave your chest. Tom right. Selleck on bass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I, 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 you're, you don't care. You got. I it. am what I am, and I'm not going to hide. It or try yeah. and change it, or do you're anything. even wearing the necklace that draws the attention to it. I, yeah. I freaking well, this love is, it. This, I wear this 
I got this bit made, but yeah. um, my, our pop was in the navy. Yeah, really good man. Mm-hmm. I don't really have tattoos, so I got the, that made. I got the anchor because yeah. he's a great. You definitely great. have the look, though, when you walk into a room that people go, "Okay, who's that? Who's that guy?" <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I'll someone. take that. Thank you. Yeah. I've, had, I've had a lot worse said about me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you both do. You both do. You walked in, and I, you know, I was waiting on Rich before you got here, and it's like, "Hey, I'm like, wow." Jim, I Jim, feel short all of a sudden. Jim was the know? guy that told me he goes, he goes, you know, when you walk into a room, as short as you are, people still probably mm-hmm. think because of the hair or something like who is that guy that, that I he never said that you were short but but no I added that um, but but he was like you really got to stop driving that Honda so, like, <laughs> so so this guy convinces me to buy an expensive car it was nice and now I'm ruined because I, once you, you drive an expensive back. car it is like when the door closes yeah. on a German car it's like and you're just like oh my god <laughs> the engineering yeah. Yeah. incredible you, you hear the German culture in that it's like nine yeah. <laughs> so I, I taught a you're German now kid. In the, uh, you're going to stay in there now. And you're in the tank. <laughs> my my son yesterday was from Munich. It was like great. It was like a, it was really really fun. So I got to hear all about you know the Munich music scene, the German yeah. music scene, and everything. Listen, I'm going to lighten the mood just a second. Yeah. Remember when we were at Calypso Cafe and those two people came in? Eric talked to one, and there was this f- lady, and I kept and and it's, it was so unlike me. I wanted to be like, oh, how are you, how are you doing? I yeah. wanted to catch up. I couldn't remember who she was. It was my old eye doctor. <laughs> and you know how it is when you see somebody out of context? Oh, yeah. I never have seen her anywhere other than wearing a white lab coat yeah. staring into my pupils. That's totally a thing. It's, you, you can... You gotta have the surrounding yeah. thing to uh, do, Out of context. do it all the time. Yeah. Hey, Doesn't we're gonna play a song. Yeah. Um, yeah. But hey, really quickly, the Fast Five. Favorite of the Fast. It's never fast, but favorite five. Favorite color. Uh, I'm orange. Wow, okay. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It is weird. Um, <laughs> I'm a weird, I'm a weird guy. <laughs> Just black, man. Black t shirt. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would never wrong. wear orange, but I, I no. like right. Favorite drink. Favorite drink. Uh, at home, we have a beer called Cascade Lager, which we call Cascade Blue, and that's that's. Is it strong, normal. high octane, or is it just it's, normal? It's a little bit higher than normal, but nice. it, you, you need to have, bring it back here. We'll have you on the I other tried, podcast. I tried. The government won't let us. Oh, really? I tried to bring some over some friends. So talk to the really U.S. Yeah. government. Let's sort that out. Interesting. Well, I live in the north, so I have to say Bogues Red, which is their rival. Right. So. Oh. oh, okay. So you get the red a, and blue. That's a rivalry that goes back to the two colonial sediments of. Tasmania. So wow. Yeah. One day there'll be a civil war and I'll lead the armies of the north. And, uh, I'll, I'll be yeah. in the south. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's going to go for me. <laughs> so what about, uh, like, your favourite uh, type of food or favourite dish? Oh. Oh, man, we have indulged over here. Over here, like, we... Love Cracker Barrel. <laughs> oh, really? I heard they're closing. No, no, no. They're no. Each well, other. I'm going to buy the franchise, whatever. Yeah. But we just oh, love. So good. We love the southern. So food. the breakfast. Love the breakfast. Love the biscuits. Love oh, the, the chicken biscuits. fried chicken. They, they call it shit on the shingle, which is the biscuits and gravy. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Mil- it's I guess it's a great U.S. Thing. military great thing. Thing. It's great uh, thing. I've really enjoyed the Mexican over here. Sure. Yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. We don't really have uh, have that in Australia. But uh, what's the spot that you guys go to here? Uh, this time, uh, we've Tony and I have enjoyed agaves. That's been uh, that's been delicious. Where is man. agaves, Jim? Do you know where? where is it? Near Briley, Briley Parkway. Parkway. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. agaves. Okay. What, what was the, um, oh, right by the uh, dealership. Mercedes oh, dealership. Mercedes dealership. Right. Yeah, I don't know. But I, all, all I know is when I walked out, I involuntary. Found myself saying that was the best food I've had in America. Okay, we got to write this down. Yeah, yeah. that was good. good. Very nice. Agave. So we're going to go there. We'll go there and break bread. And now this is people find it very, very difficult. But and this can be based on just because you love the artist, you love the production, or you love the melody, the 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 story. What is a song that this thing comes on and the you're in your jeep in the outback and you just crank that thing up, man. I, I know mine. I'm a Beatles fanatic. Oh, and I think, I think Abbey Road's the greatest album ever made. But yes. In particular, Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight, The End. That is, in my opinion, some of the greatest pieces piece of music ever made. I want that played at my funeral, just putting mm. that out there to the world. Hopefully okay. it's many, many years away. But yes. Way, you know, way the Golden Slumbers starts, once there was a way to get back home, would, once there was a way to get back home, it's just... Gives me the you shivers. Get the, you get the, well, the, the shivers. The, the, I just, I don't know. I just connect with it on a, 
Well, that's on another. That's the power of music. It is. It's the power of music. Amazing. I got to think about my funeral song. What's it going to be? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Ch- yeah, it changes weekly for me. Yeah. So you know, this at this moment, I'm just. I've got a bit of a thing with about Bon Jovi in these arms for mm. some reason. Oh, just great. They yes. made so many production choices that didn't need to be there, but God, I'm glad they're there. What record like, is that off? off. It's like uh, a B-side, right? Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, like the great, great of hits, greatest okay. hits kind of thing, and they did a couple extra things. Now, didn't you guys go to the premiere yeah. the, to see the band play no, at the, the, the restaurant? You guys, you guys had the, uh, the opportunity to meet them. Oh, right? oh, oh, I did. Some of did us you? did. Some so, of us had the opportunity. I'll do yeah. it as a quick story because Nick hates it, but our, <laughs> we've recently signed back to ABC Music in Australia, and our label head, Nat, is, was over here for CMA Fest. Um, she's just a gem. She's our biggest supporter. She's so great. And we bumped into her and we're having a drink. And she said, I'm going to a listening party at Ocean Way tomorrow mm-hmm. to listen to the new Bon Jovi album. Now, we're all out at the time. And if you haven't picked up on this podcast, I'm probably a bit more of an extrovert than Nick. So I was a little bit drunk and was like, well, I'll come. I'll come. <laughs> Volunteering. And she's like, well, no, it's like record heads. And I, I don't know if, if um, I was like, oh, no, 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 I'll come, I'll come. And? She goes, well, I'll ask. I'll ask. Anyway, she texted the guy who was organising. She said, yeah, we, we, you, you can bring a plus one. Mm-hmm. And at, that was me. And these look, these guys got to go see Shenandoah. So they were, I knew that was that's Nick's vibe. Anyway, got to listen to the whole album. The band came out, got to ask them a question, mm-hmm. uh, which was really cool because ironically, before this trip, I'd watched the documentary about Bon Jovi. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. and I thought, my God, these guys, obviously they're the best, but I thought they write the best third person Bangers, so like examples, Live on a Prayer. Yeah. Tommy used to work on the docks. Mm-hmm. Gina works the diner all day. Someday I'll be Saturday night, you know. Hey, my name is Jim. Where did I go wrong? My life's a bargain basement. All the good shit's gone. Like these great characters, but yet the songs are like anthems that are sung in stadiums. Yeah. And I was like, how? So I thought, I said, look, I'm in a room with Bon Jovi. This is one of my notes. I'm an artist. I get... This is what I wanted to do with the songwriting trip. Now I get to ask Bon Jovi about it. What and did he say? He was really cool. Um, um, first off, he sort of said, well, some of it is experience. He said, I just know what's going to work with the crowd, what they're going to sing. He then said, we don't always get that right. Um, he, I can't remember the name of the song, but he referred to a song off the last couple of albums. He goes, I thought when we recorded that, he said, I thought that was going to be the next It's My Life. I thought mm-hmm. it was going to be the next Living on a Prayer. <laughs> and um, he said, the first night we got out on stage and started playing it, it was like the crowd were like, <laughs> he's like, oh. golf clap. He's like, I got it. He goes, I get it wrong. And then at that point, Tico Torres stepped up and he's like, I mean, I, I fucking love the song. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then anyway, yeah, he just Tico. he just sort of said, look, it's it has to be come from the heart. It has to be real. It has to be true. He said, those characters exactly don't have to be exactly Fleshed real people. Yeah. Real people. Yeah. But they those people exist. You know, Tommy. Yeah. Might I don't know, I don't think there everybody was an could Tommy to work on the docks, but yeah. there's definitely a guy working on the docks yeah. who heard that and went shit, that's me. But so, it could be you know Tom, you know not Tommy and Gina, but it could be Jeff and Jennifer, yeah, you know yeah, exactly. And, and so, they're relating to that song because well, I know what it's like to work, you know, uh, yeah. third shift, and he's out there busting his butt as an electrician. It, it, exactly, it, yeah. it was it was great, and it was something I wanted to do this trip, and I think we got one. I think yeah. we got one, and it was something I wanted to do on this trip because when you think of country, it's often like about the girl or it's about my home or my 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 feelings this Friday night it's all very first person yeah. there's not much third person stuff interesting, so. interesting. Right. I yeah. thought, maybe thought. that's the shift yeah because yeah. yeah. Angela man yeah. Pendulum's yeah. coming back <laughs> I'm telling you I met Gina she works on the she she works on the inner workings of the Bon Jovi organization I said yeah. now is that you and she goes I'll never tell but it, <laughs> it, 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 it could have been yeah it, it could have been so that was a very very special moment. And I think they genuinely enjoyed the question. Mm-hmm. Like when I went up and got a photo, shook John's hand, he was like, yeah, good good luck, mate. I was like, oh, that's sweet. Thanks, John Bon Jovi. Seems like a nice guy. And, and, to, and a very, very brave documentary to be showing oh, gosh. the vulnerability of where so he is. Right. And I, I felt yeah. so sorry for him because watching that documentary, it cemented to me, I thought these are some of the best, this is one of the best bands ever. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt, best songwriters and the reinventing fact that, themselves. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. fact that those guys all came from New Jersey and they're like Tico's 
one, I think one of the best drummers in the world. Like, yeah. talk about yeah. powerhouse. He, he kind of freaked me out because we, we actually saw them back in Vegas when we lived there. Yeah. And um, I, if you get in front of my wife, we mentioned John Bon Jovi, she'll point to her arm because that's where he sweat on her. Sure. <laughs> and uh, they did like a side stage thing. They would, they would platoon people up and you've got to watch the band rock out. And it was kind of a cool thing. You know, my radio abilities got me up there, but whatever. Um, and when I was up there, I was standing behind my wife, and you know, Richie came over, John came over, yeah. but Tico was just staring like holes through the back of my <laughs> Why? I don't okay. know. He must have knew you were a drummer. He's like, don't tell my He was just staring right at me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going. He might have been jonesing for a cigar. Every shot in that documentary, yeah, he's got a cigar cigars. or a, a, a cigarette. I oh, know. I thought the same. I, I thought, was like, my God, God. He's walking through the airport smoking a cigar. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Last question. All right. Favorite film. It comes on. You're going like, to put your life on hold. I am finishing watching this. Uh, I'd say... Good <laughs> I would say Goodfellas. Oh, great. Uh, Ah, yeah. What a great movie. I'm going to give you a very, very deep Australian cut, and it's a movie called Sunday Too Far Away, and it's uh, like a 70s, it's a a movie about a sheep shearer. So there's some homework for you all. Wow. So this is just like culturally, this is like your uh, Jaws, Close Encounters, it's like popular. It's like a, no, it's more, uh, no, just, just watch it. It's a little bit, definitely it. a bit of a cult yeah. thing, but there's some, right. it's some great Austra- early Australian yeah, characters. Yeah, early Australian, it. it's good. Yeah. It's some nice. great early Australian characters in it that you'd just be like, <laughs> what is that? You guys would watch it and be like, I've never you're seen You're probably going to watch it and be like, what? Yeah. Is this another planet? Yeah, no, yeah. it's good. Yep. Okay, we got we, we have to remember that. And yeah. we're going to do a song right now, yeah. but hey, well, let's, we're going to end with the song, but uh, you guys have the, uh, was it Wolf, the wolfbrothers.com? Wolfbrothers.com. You can do the Instagram. The Wolf, Facebook, yeah, the YouTube. We're, we're on it all. We're on TikTok. We're on doing all, all the stuff. Everyone check out the Spotify. Six records, nine Golden Guitar Awards, 19 number one Australian country songs. Congratulations, guys. Rich, can I just say again how much we love you, you guys. and right. uh, thank you for everything you've done for thank us. You, guys. You, are, you deserve everything you get, mate. You're you a wonderful well. human being. And thank you. you so much for my gift. I had some whiskey oh, yeah. here. Well, I thought we should Got bring... some gentleman Jack, and you guys are just assuming that yeah. I'm a gentleman. I'll, I'll, I will take it. <laughs> well, we sort of thought 11 a.m. might hey. be a little early, but, you know, we're Australian. So hey, we'll, 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 pop, we'll pop this after. <laughs> <laughs> but but this, is a, yeah. this is a seminal track for you guys, and if you got any drummers out there, I am looking at a chart because I care. <laughs> I care. <laughs> this, so this basically opens pretty much every show. Yeah. Every show we open this one. So written by, from, written by Rich, Eric, and JT. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, boys. Thanks, boys. Okay. <laughs> It's a road down your window Night moves on the radio Kind of night, kind of night It's a you and I here and now It's good Breakfast in a hometown Kind of night, kind of night Oh, 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 oh It's all ours, baby Drive through the desert Stars go on forever Kind of night, kind of night It's a beautiful getaway Saying everything you want to say Kind of night, kind of night Oh, oh, oh It's all ours, baby
TheWolfBrothers.com. Check them out. Crank up the Spotify. Support them. Be a fan. Thank you guys so much for being here. Man. Thank you, Mike. Right. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Absolutely. Jim, My Jim as always, man, we really appreciate your time and talent. Jim is the secret weapon. You know, <laughs> when I when he's not here, I miss him. He does so much with the file management and the editing and just making all the ugly stuff behind the scenes look sexy. Oh! <laughs> Thanks, Jim, and hey to all the listeners out there. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the podcast. Until next time, see ya. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts. 